Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome back to the Real Legend of Gaming, where you can get reviews and guides for your favorite games. Today, we were here doing a review for Left to Survive. It just launched on the app stores, along with the Google Play Store, folks, and it looks like an awesome game. So let's check it out. All right, cool. So what's Left to Survive? We'll give you a little overview. Grab your guns and bring your guts to survive the ultimate action shooter game left to survive. Danger lurks everywhere. Survive against zombies using rifles, grenades, shotguns, and anything in your arsenal to secure safe havens and save survivors. Build your encampment to defend yourself against enemy attacks. Get to the chopper and lay waste on enemy base to steal their resources. Battle other players in solo and team multiplayer tournaments. Band together with other human factions. So you're basically going to be able to kill hordes of zombies. You get to destroy bases from a helicopter. It's supposed to be an intense PvP, right? You think the zombies are deadly? Test your survivor skills against live players in solo and 2v2 matches. You also get to challenge zombie bosses. You defend yourself against zombies that can jump, wear police armor, or explode with toxic gas. Now, a lot of this stuff reminds me of Left 4 Dead 2, so it's pretty cool, right? It's I'm not saying it's Left 4 Dead 2 mobile, but it has some similarities to it, and that's always a good thing. And last but not least, right, you get to build and customize your base. Build, customize, and defend your encampment from zombies and rival factions. You locate survivors, you loot materials, and you band together to overcome a post-apocalyptic world. Now, just a little note, Let's Survive is a free-to-play game, but there are items that you can purchase with real money, and that's pretty much it. So, let's get into some gameplay, folks. Let's see the story, and let's enjoy this action survivor shooter. All right, let's check it out. All right, let's go. Wow, graphics look sick. Damn. So far, it plays really smooth, too. I haven't ran yet, but the shooting is pretty okay. It's not difficult. Oh. Melee, nice. All right, let's go help out Jesse. All right, so that was the mission. That was pretty quick, but I mean, this is the first mission. But I'm very impressed so far. Even like the background flickering and everything, the little fire flashes, like this is pretty sick. All right, so we'll take a look at what the rewards are for winning the matches, right? So you get some cash, you get a bonus for headshots, you get med kits, grenades, and scrap metal, which... I'm sure you'll be using it for your base. Now, if you looked at the bottom left hand side of that screen before I moved it, you saw that you had a level and XP bar. So there is a storyline, no voiceovers, but you know you get to read along. It gives you some oversight of what's going on in the story, which is a good thing, right? You got to know what's going on. All right, so we are back at our camp. I guess this is where we start doing the stuff with the resources and everything. All right, so it says, "Let me help you with food production." All right, so let's do some food production here. We're going to build a farm. And it should be built in pretty, yep, two seconds. There we go. Nice. All right, so there's also a store where you can get a shotgun. All right, so right over here, we're going to click. And we're going to get ourselves a new weapon, which actually, if you look at that menu, it was pretty cool. It had different weapons that you can go in and buy. Now, you see the weapons cost cash. Which I'm, you know, you accumulate from doing missions. All right, we're gonna equip it. All right, let's go to the campaign. So if you look, you have regular missions, and then there's some that have a giant character highlighted. From what it looks like, that's a boss battle. So we'll be able to see. We're gonna go through and see how far we can get. And right here, you look. You need the tomatoes to start. So that represents your energy bar. Oh, nice. We're on the helicopter now. and We got the rail gun. Let's go. Oh, what? We're shooting turrets? We got rockets? 
Oh, that was pretty hot. I always love scenes like this, man. This is sick. All right, so you can also upgrade your weapons, right? Now, to do the upgrades, you need those materials that you are finding, along with cash, or if you want to do instant upgrade, use gold. Now, as far as the upgrades, you can do damage, rate of fire, clip size, reload time, and critical damage. So we just upgrade our SMG, and we're going to go in and fight this boss over here. And also, eventually, you get to unlock a rifle slot. It's getting intense right now. Remember, you can always use your melee as well. Now, there's an exploder there. You shoot his belly, and then he's going to throw off toxin. But obviously, if that toxin goes on you, my guess is you're going to attract more enemies. Right, based off of we've always seen characters like that in other games. Now, here's where the gold comes in. So there's different crates that have items. They have specialist crates. And then you also got event crates that require other things. But right now we have a free crate. So let's open it up. Alright, so we got another machete. Alright, so as far as the other modes, right? In order to unlock PvP, folks, you need to raise your base power. So if you look on the bar right there, my base power needs to be 580 before I can unlock PvP, which is 2v2 matches. Then if you want to unlock raids, you also have to upgrade your base power up to 1,775. It's a little bit higher. Now for each base, at some point, you'll get these puzzle pieces where you can assign someone to the base that gives it a certain attribute boost. So for example, Marion Oak Ridge will give um, increasing building HP by 40%, increase the farm's food production by 15%, Paul can increase the building HP by 70%, and increase the material production by 15%, and the stats continue to go up. And they all seem to have a cost of 50% so far, but like, you know, there's different attributes, player HP and PVE, player damage and PVE. Then you got this guy who looks a little bit like Daryl, increases PVE as well, you see? All right, folks, so that's our review and first impressions for Left to Survive. So if you're looking for an action zombie shooter, this is pretty good. Missions are pretty quick as well. The shooting, you get used to it at, towards the, um, I guess, like the third mission. You start getting used to the movement of the camera. Remember, if the enemy is too close, you can always use the melee. Um, as far as, like, customization options, there are a lot of different weapons that you can unlock. Do I think that this will hit eventually a, a pay-to-play grid or a wall? It could, right? Anytime you see gold involved in a game, that's always a concern, especially if the best items in the game require you to purchase it with gold. But I haven't played long enough into the game to really say that, folks, so I got to be fair with the assessment. But I also might have pointed out that, you know, currency is something that's a factor in the game. Now, um, I think it's cool that it has some elements similar to Clash of Clans, right? where you get to upgrade your base, upgrade your supplies. So, you know, if you're playing games like that and you enjoy them, then that element in this game will be pretty cool. Because also, remember, you can go on raids, you can loot other bases, so it's going to have some cool features. And then once you unlock PvP, you can do 2v2 battles, so that'll be a lot of fun as well. So if you're into these type of action shooters with a little bit of um, Clash of Clan and uh, Game of War type stuff, then you'll really enjoy it. You know, it is. it will be a lot of fun for you guys. So uh, that's pretty much it. That's my review and first impression, folks. And you saw the gameplay, so be a judge for yourself as well. All right, so other than that, folks, peace out.